grace to you and peace from God our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh Lord, All Saints Sunday may mean different things to different people. Help us to see ourselves as your children, and each one of us around us as a brother or a sister saint in Christ. Amen. So when we think of saints, we typically think of characters in the Bible, Matthew, John, who wrote today's Gospel, St. Paul, Peter, of course, who have got their images on a picture in the back of the church. But how often do we think of St. Carol? Or St. Santiago? Now, you may not have brought anybody back from the dead, but you are a faithful follower of Jesus, and every Sunday you help break down this worship setup. And St. Lori, who celebrates a birthday today, has week after week faithfully followed her Lord and help set up the bulletin for Sunday morning or help us with our council meetings. There's St. Madeline, and for all that she does, I mean, every one of us, in one way or another. But maybe the best definition of a saint I ever heard came from a little child. It was at the church I served in Minneapolis, where they had beautiful stained glass windows along either side of the sanctuary. Images of biblical characters doing what was recorded in the Bible of them. And she would sit there on Sunday mornings and just stare at the windows, pay no attention to the rest of the service. And one day she asked me, you know, who are those people? And I said, well, according to the sign, that's St. John. Do you know what a saint is? And she said, sure. A saint is someone the sun shines through. <laughs> what a wonderful definition of a saint. Only we change the spelling from S-U-N to S-O-N. And a saint is a person through whom the Son of God shines. We as saints... Let God's light shine through us. By ourselves, we're not holy. We're nothing special. But when God flows through us, we become the hands of God. We become the face of God to people who need it. As we gather together for church, we function as saints when we support one another. St. Paul writes that we bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, which was to love one another as I have loved you. I like trees. And I'm thinking maybe we should grow a whole row of trees all around the front so this way when the wind blows we won't wind up with a mountain of tumbleweed out here by the gate. <laughs> but I don't think that's too practical. Although, wouldn't it be cool if we had these really big, tall trees? Did you know that a redwood tree is the tallest living structure in the world? And probably the oldest living structure in the world. Sometimes they rise as high as four or 500 feet, and they're probably about 2,000 years old. Now, you would think that a tree that's 450 feet high would have a root system that sinks down probably as deep into the earth as the trunk rises into the air. You would think that, but you'd be wrong. Actually, it's the opposite. Redwood trees have a very narrow and shallow root system. But the thing is, as the roots from the two trees extend out laterally, they intertwine. And so all those trees are connected to one another through their root system. So that in the event of a horrible storm, 
we need not worry about one of those trees falling because the other trees are helping to support it. And so it is we, as Christians, have a root system that intertwines the same way. And when one is struggling, others are there to provide strength and support. But not only do we reach out to one another, but we reach out to those who have not yet heard the message of Jesus. Future saints. You don't have to be anybody special. Just you. You don't have to know a whole lot of Bible verses. You don't have to be an expert in theology. You're simply someone who shares the love of God with another person. You're the kind of individual about whom it can be said, she's different. There's something different about her than the other counselors who work in our office. We're all compassionate, but Christy's just a little bit different. Well, if you've known mad about Christy for a long time, that's another story. Different because I know you well enough to know how well you share God's love with other people. You may not spout a lot of Bible verses to them, but you reach out to them the same way Jesus would. We need each other to remind ourselves about who we are and what we can be. Once there was a monastery located back in the middle of a beautiful wood near a large open field. And people would come and visit the monastery and spend time there in prayer or maybe picnic on the front lawn or just sit in quiet meditation. You know how it goes. Years go by. People live for half a century or more, if that's even possible. Hmm. And the monastery began to wither. And soon there were only five of the monks left, and all of them 70 years of age or older. And they began to be concerned that people were no longer coming to the monastery. The buildings were in need of repair. They were not old, young enough anymore to be able to do the repairs themselves. And they began to wonder if maybe the time had come to consider shutting down. Maybe we're just not resourceful enough anymore. And so the abbot of the monastery, the man in charge, went into town to the local church and sat and visited with the pastor who was there. And they talked with one another and they wept and they prayed. And the abbot asked, is there anything that you can suggest that could save our monastery? And the pastor said, actually, no. Our church congregation is pretty much the same way. We're small, we're older, there's not many of us left. And so they prayed some more, and as the abbot was leaving, he asked, is there anything you can share with me? And the preacher looked at him and with a quizzical expression on his face said, did you know that the Messiah is in your abbot and lives through one of you? And so the abbot went back and shared that message with the other monks, that one of them had the presence of the Messiah within him and was able to share that with others. And at first, the other four were very confused. But then they began to wonder which one of them it might be who had the presence of the Messiah within him. And so they thought to themselves, well, he might have met Brother Thomas. Brother Thomas is a holy man. He knows and respects everyone. Brother Thomas is spiritually keen and insightful. Perhaps he's the one with the Messiah. On the other hand, it could be Brother Eldred. Now Brother Eldred gets crotchety at times. 
But when you look back on it, Eldred is always right. Always, often, very right. Maybe the preacher meant Brother Eldred. Now, surely he could not have meant Brother Philip. Philip is so passive, quiet, never says much of anything. But then, he has a gift for somehow always being there when we need him. Maybe the Messiah is within Brother Philip. And the abbot thought to himself, well, maybe he meant me. I am the spiritual leader of this monastery. Perhaps I'm the one in whom the Messiah lives. Well, you really couldn't tell which one had the presence of the Messiah. But within a few days, the monks changed. Their attitude toward each other was just a little bit different, a little more caring, a little more loving. And as people would come out to visit, they would encounter these transformed monks and sensed that when they were in the presence of these monks, they were indeed in the presence of the Messiah. And it didn't matter if it was Eldred or Thomas or Philip or Robert. Whomever encountered these folks from town was able to give that impression. And so those folks came back for another visit. And they brought friends with them. And those folks came back. And they brought friends and neighbors with them. And soon, once again, people were picnicking on the front lawn and resting under the trees and enjoying the time for meditation on this beautiful piece of property where the Spirit of Christ seemed to just permeate everything. And some folks from town were so moved by the experience that they wanted to join the monastery and become monks. First one, and two, and before you know it, their numbers were growing regularly. And the monastery was as vibrant now as it had been before. Now, I don't know if you're seeing any analogy between that story and Grace Lutheran Church. I do. I see that we are small in numbers. Tommy represents our youth group. <laughs> but we have the Spirit of Christ within us. The love of the Messiah flows from us to the lives of the people we touch. As we gather here on Sunday morning, it's not just for ourselves. It's so that God can touch our lives and empower us to leave here today taking with us that message of love, of forgiveness, of grace. So by all means, invite people to come and join us, visit with us, worship with us, so that they too can experience each week what you experience. Saints are people through whom the light of Christ shines. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.